Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about how to create a pivot table in Python. And this pivot table is similar to an Excel pivot table that you can drag and drop to create a table, or it's like a cross table in Tableau or Power BI that you can drag a dimension and measure into the view and the table with different activations with different level of detail of dimensions and measures. Data exploration in Python is not as simple as or as interactive as Tableau. So in Python, especially for beginners, is actually a little bit difficult for us to do uh, data exploration because you need sometimes you need to answer different business questions that might sound simple, but you need to write a lot of codes, you need to copy and paste the code, change the variables, change the values, and things like that to create um, multiple level of details or different aggregation methods. Data visualization tools like Tableau in this case will be very convenient that you can just drag and drop into the views and create a table with different level of details. And for filtering, you can just drag the dimensions into the filter cards and use a drop down field to do filtering. So this is so much more convenient compared to Python where you have to write codes, different codes for different uh, level of regulations is not so beginner friendly. So I was, and even for myself when I was uh, dealing with new data sets and exploring new data, I always try to export my data set into Tableau to do the first level of data exploration. And then I'll go back to Python again and go back to Tableau again for another level of uh, data exploration. So this will sometimes be time consuming and inconvenient because I have to go back and forth different uh, with different software. But you know, it's much, it's so much convenient when you can have just drag and drop uh, features in your tool. So even though I can write Python codes, I can create different level of the aggregations, but it's just uh, not that convenient, right? So uh, one day I was thinking, can we have this kind of interactive features in Python? Then I came across a random article in from a LinkedIn connection uh, introducing this uh, library in Python that you can create drag and drop pivot table in Python. It's called uh, Pivot Table JS. And I decided to give it a try and create a tutorial for how you can use this pivot table to do your data exploration, your exploratory data analysis. So, and then I come up with a few business questions so that you can answer those questions with this drag and drop pivot table in Python. So without further ado, let's get started. Right, so first of all, we will need to install the packages. So we, if you are using uh, Jupyter Notebook, you can just use Pinstall. Uh, we will, you will need to wait for a while for the installation process. And then you can start importing the data. The link to data I have listed down in the description box below, or you can go to head, head over to my Medium article for all the resources link. And now we can start to import our data. So we will first need to read our data. And I put my file path in this file path variable. And then I would just pass the file path as a variable into my read Excel so that you can just copy and paste my code here. And you will need to modify this file path to the folder that you store your global superstore Excel. Okay. So now we have read our global superstore data. Then we need to import the library for our pivot table. So we will just import the pivot UI from the pivot table JS library, and then we'll read the function pivot UI and pass our data frame into that function. Then you need to wait for a few seconds. And here you see that you have this table-like structure 
and you have all the table column names over here and this totals 102,000 this is actually the count of rows in our data table so this count of rows shows that we have 102,000 rows in our data table which is not the truth because we actually have only 51,000 rows we will talk about this a little bit for a little bit later now i just want to introduce you the interface of this pivot table so now i have all the column names here and here category here is actually my product category and the count here shows that these are the numbers for how many rows are there for these product categories and total them up i have 102,000 but actually you can see there are 51,000 rows with null values right notice that in my pandas data frame i have only 51,000 rows which means this is actually a duplication of my entire data table entire data table inclusive of the column name all right so i actually google a little bit and from my medium article i have a link to the page for this solution and i have to scroll down a little bit until this guy have posted the solution this is actually a problem with the end of line structure so uh, in this case this guy offer a solution but uh, uh, so that i just copy and paste into my code i will create a new cell so you can compare the differences and i before i run the cell i want i like to delete the code the first three lines of the code because this is actually uh him trying to define a new data frame but i i i've actually run uh, define my own data frame so i don't need this and i will need to pass my data frame into this function and then here i will just run the pivot ui function against this data set again so I run the cell i will get fifty one thousand rows compared to 102 rows over here all right so this is actually the right one 51,000 rows and now let me just introduce you the interface of this pivot table a little bit for example i showing category and now i do not have any now values anymore all right and instead of counting the number of rows i like to show maybe the total sales for this product category so instead of count I think I would like to have some of sales. So this furniture category actually has 41, sorry, 4.1 million dollars of sales, 3.7 million of sales for office supplies, 4.7 million of sales for technology. So if I add subcategory to below the product category and before i do that if i want to drag it up it's a little bit difficult because is the screen is not that big for me to uh, put it in one shot so i will need to do another trick that is i can actually drag it up and then move next to my category under my category so in this case i have my subcategory column next to my product category so you notice that uh, the order of this column name how you place this column name is crucial because it will follow the order that you put the column name for example now i put my category before my subcategory then my category will be we occupy the first column my subcategory occupy the second column so when i switch the position the other way around you notice the position of the column in my resulting pivot table also change 
switch them back again and then I put my marker to expand the table. When I put it onto my horizontal container, separate the unit values into different column names. So this is how you can put the, the different dimensions into creating a uh, different level of detail for your pivot table. Now I'd like to show you the sorting features here. Here, when you see two arrows pointing up and down, it means this is actually the original sorting orders. There's no changes to your uh, original sorting orders. But when you start to click on it, this shows that this is actually in ascending order. So you notice that, uh, but then you, you realize that here, the 63,000 is actually below your 101,000, right? But you notice that it's actually because the total of the numbers is more than the previous totals. So it doesn't care about what values you have in these columns. You only care about your total numbers when it tries to sort your data. So when I remove my marker here, when I want to remove, I put it back to original place you will see that the total is actually well sorted in order, right? So when I click again, it will sort in descending order. When I click on it again, it go, goes back to the arrow pointings upwards and downwards. Now it's actually back to the original sorting order. Click on the horizontal arrow, it's actually trying to sort according to my marker which is actually sorting the totals over here. So now when I click on this again, it actually sorts in descending order. When I click on this again, it goes back to the original sorting order. All right. So this is about sorting. Now I want to remove my market. And I'm trying to do filtering in this paper table. How do I do filtering? You know, you notice that there is, actually, there is actually a small arrow beside our column name. For example, product category. I will click on my product category. And then I will just uncheck my checkboxes here. And then I will click apply. Note that I only leave my furniture checkbox on. And now I have only furniture here. So this is actually how we can filter our data in the pivot table, right? So now if I apply the filter back to original position and I can, here is actually the structure of our visual. Now it's actually a table, it's actually our pivot table. And when we switch to heat map, it will kind of, uh, you automatically do the conditional formatting to your table. When I switch to a bar chart, it will show bar chart and can actually switch to all different kinds of charts over here. But this will be another topic that we might consider doing the other day in maybe another video. So for today, we will just talk about the pivot table. So we will always keep this at the tables. Right now that we are familiar with the interface of the pivot table, let's go to deal with a few business problems and to, to see how we can use this pivot table to answer some business questions. So here I have a few questions for you. I, I definitely encourage all of you to pause the video, try to solve the problem on your own, and then play the video after you've done to try to answer whether it's the same with my solution. That In that way, you will learn more by yourself rather than following my solution step by step. Which subcategories have the top three highest total profit? And for these subcategories that are in the top three highest total profit, are they in the same subcategory? Are they in the same product category? And which market in these subcategories has the highest total profit? So let's answer the first question. Top three subcategory for total profit. So because you want the top three, we will sort in descending order. And now you can see the top three is actually copiers, phones, and bookcases. 
And by adding the category into the view, we will see that actually bookcases belongs to furniture and the top two belongs to technology. All right. The third part of the question requires us to add market into the view. And then we will notice that for copiers and phones, Asia Pacific market is highest total profit. But for bookcases, the highest is actually the Middle East market. All right. So this is three of our first questions. Now head over to our second question. Which market has the highest total profit in the furniture category? We only need the furniture category. So we are going to remove that categories back to original position. And since this table is too wide to view in a glance, maybe we will just put it down below the product category column, set the sorting order back to original order. Then we are going to filter category with on, to only the furniture category. And now we can see that the highest profit for the market is actually the Asia Pacific market. All right, so that's all for today's tutorial for how to create pivot table in Python. And I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.